Okay, so this session we'll talk about how um, data bricks can be connected to uh, ADLS so that it can access any Azure Data Lake store. So the, for this demo, I'm going to show you how we can mount to Azure Data Lake store Gen 2. Okay, so uh, so it's a four-step process. First, we need to register one web application and connect this with Databricks, meaning it will create, once you register the application, it will give you a client ID, tenant ID, and the key. So we can use these three things uh, to connect to Databricks. And the second point is store this key that is created while uh, registering the app in Azure Key Vault. You don't need to store it mandatorily in Azure Key Vault, but it's a best practice so that we don't need to expose this key inside the script or any client application, right? So once you store this key inside Key Vault, we will be using the name of the secret. I'll show you how it is. It is, uh, the, the Key Vault is basically like, um, um uh, what do you say um the uh, bank locker it will act as a bank locker where you can store all your uh, secret things and uh, retrieve whenever you want right using only uh, the names okay so the next uh, step is uh, creating the scope in databricks uh, while creating the scope that will have connectivity to um, Azure Key Vault, right? So once we have all these three things, the next thing is um, mounting Databricks to the ADLS. <clears throat> For that, we'll be using the client ID, tenant ID, and the key. Okay, now let's see how we can do it. Um, for that, let's go to the Azure Active Directory first. I'm going to create the app registration, right? So if you look at, once you go inside Active Directory, on the left-hand side, you can see app registrations. Click on that. So I already registered a Dbricks, but I can show you how, if, if you don't, if you're not, created any app registration you can just click on new registration type in your uh, name the uh, breaks demo something I can give and uh, if you if, if you would like to use multi-tenant with active directory you can choose that one or uh, if you want to use personal account also you can use uh, with that too right but for this demo i just selected account this uh, accounts in this organizational directory only now um so if any authentication response to this uri after successfully authenticating the user you can give any name but this is optional so if you want you can give uh, anything so for this demo i can give my site name right and click on register so this is the registering part right so once you register you will get client ID then tenant ID these two are important uh, then take the copy and uh, keep it in your notepad right because this is required at the time of mounting the next thing what we need to get it from here is key so click on certificates and secrets on the left side then click new client secret you can give any name my bricks secret okay uh, we have the option to recreate the secret every one year two year or never expire Okay, then click on add so you can see one key value here you have to take the copy of this one and store it uh, in notepad because once you move out from this screen you'll not be able to see this 
and HDTF. Okay. Okay. Now uh, all the activities inside this app registration uh, is done. Now we can close this. The next thing is, as I said, we'll go to Key Vault and uh, store this key that we copied right inside uh, Key Vault. Right. So click on the Key Vault, the service I already installed. If you guys not installed, then go and install uh, Key Vault. I'm not going to explain how we can create Key Vault here, but um, we can do it later in a different session. Okay. Now, once it is open, click on the secrets and uh, here you can create, generate or import. Click on that. You can give any name here. Uh, key Vault Secret for Debris. Now, you need to paste that um, key that generated in previous uh, step, right? Just uh, copy and for this also you can create activation date or set expiration date, but for this demo I'm not uh, keeping it. Now click on create. That will create your uh, keyword, keyword entry. Okay, so your uh, app registration is done. Your key vault uh, storing the key inside the key vault is done. The next step is we need to create the scope in Databricks so that we can have tie up with Databricks and the key vault, right? So for that, just select, take this URL, your Databricks URL, paste it in another window then after this hash you can um, type create scope and secret slash so this will open up uh, the window for creating the scope here you can give the scope name scope okay scope uh, key vault now look at this you have to give dns name and a resource id so where you'll get this you remember in the uh, step one when we created the app registration right um, you got client ID and sorry, sorry, uh, forget it. When you create the um, key vault, if you go to the key vault, see properties, right? Let's go to the properties. So here you can see DNS name and the resource ID. So come here and give the DNS name and the resource ID, right? So let's take this, copy this, I'll paste it, and resource ID. Okay. Now you are creating it. That's it. Your scope has created. So you have all the required components. Now let's go to the actual script that will mount Databricks. Uh, ADLS to the Databricks. Now, this is the Python code. You have you can use Scala code also, but um, I'm using Python here. And this code you'll get it um, from Databricks site. Copy that from there. Only uh, things what we need to do is change the properties like client ID. This is the client ID that we got it. Uh, from app registration and this is the tenant ID okay and the secret we are not directly giving here right we are going and picking up from the keyword um, 
if you don't use keyword then you need to provide the key directly here that is not the best practice because that is exposing your key to all the users right so once you have the key then it is easy to access your um, session so even i expose this one because it is for demo i'll i'll change it after the demo right otherwise i should have masked it now to get the secret from the um keyword you need to use the scope the scope we just now we created um while creating the scope we have connectivity to keyword using dns name and resource id right so we just use this scope name and the key name the key name is provided here in the keyword so you will be using the name from here okay so it will retrieve the uh, key and use it for mounting so again i'm telling you the client id tenant id this is the tenant id uh this is the client id and the secret we are taking it from the keyword right so this is the configuration part and the next one is mounting so for mounting we'll be using uh the storage account name and the file system so let's go to that so if you go here this is a storage account and you can see this is a storage account name right and if you go to storage explorer this is the file system i created demo if you want you can you can give specific folder access by mount specific folder access if multiple team is using and you are supposed to use only one mounting then you can create another folder and add that folder as a mount point okay so i'm going back here here i given the uh, fold the file system name and this is the storage account name uh, and the mount point so this is the mount point where i can use it while accessing the files okay so once you mount then you can check whether it is really mounted just click using dbutils.fs.ls and the mount name enter shift enter and that will give you all the folders or files in the mount right so you can see uh, there are processed row and delta lake so if you go back to the storage account you can see delta lake processed and row it means you're already mounted let's say you want to unmount then you can use this command it's very simple a dbutils.fs.unmount and the um, mount name right so uh, with this you are clear about how you can mount um, adls to databricks so recapping um, for recap it is register web application and connect this with the databricks that is the first step and the second step is it's not mandatory but that is the best practice to keep your keys inside azure key vault and use the key vault secret name instead of key directly the second the, the third thing is create the scope in databricks that will connect your databricks to the key vault that is required at the time of retrieving the key uh using the scope name then finally we are using this script to connect uh to the adls hope you are clear about this if you have any questions please comment below i'll be happy to answer any comments okay thank you thank you very much